Hey guys, James with TFB TV, my two favorite words in the world, new Glock. And we've got a new Glock, but it's not really a new Glock. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. So I've got my buddy Jason Klossner here with Lipsies, and he's going to walk us through our new old Glock. First of all, tell everybody they want to know what it is. Let's just get uh, it all out. Yeah, yeah, let's get it out. <laughs> what is it? What do we have? Well, James, what we decided to do is pursue a new project with Glock as an Ellipses exclusive and we recreated the original Glock, the P80. So that's the gun that the, the Austrian military adopted and was the first Glock that ever, was ever produced. Basically, it's the Gen 117, but the first you know, several thousand guns for the Austrian military were marked uh, P80. Before we start getting into the specs, I mean, there are a lot of people out there that now they're thinking, you know, okay, how's this different from the original? <laughs> yeah. What's the deal with this one? How much is it gonna, there are a lot of questions out there. Right. Guys, we're gonna cover all of them but walk us through the narrative. How did this start? Whose idea was it? Uh, what went on to bring this about? So, you know, we've done a lot of exclusives with Glock in the past. Um, you know, we, we did the FDE uh, frame guns, the gray guns, we did the Vickers edition guns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're always looking at how, you know, with Glock, you know, they make handguns, they make them pretty much all the same. You know, they have the different generations, but, you know, a lot of us are Glock guys and we're trying to, you know, what would be cool, would be something else to have. And we realized, you know, a lot of people in the, the Glock collectors in the market don't have the Gen 1 guns. So, you know, I was like, man, it would really be cool to be able to make a retro gun and, and really do it right. So this was about a three-year project. Uh, you know, we, we approached Glock about doing it. Um, they were open to it at first, and that was great, but there was one big hang-up. The original molds weren't around anymore. So it, it took some time and, and, and effort to get those recreated and, and, and done. And what I think we came up with was a really good, you know, rendition of the original Glock. This is a project you guys have worked with Glock for the past three years. Yes. You guys have, have yes. done this, worked closely with them to bring back the, the Gen 1 Glock, more or less. Correct. Yeah, this is the first time they've ever gone retro. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, even when they did the anniversary Glocks, it was still just a Gen 4 that had some markings on it, whatever. But, um, you know, they've never had really, I think, you know, the Austrian side of Glock, you know, the, the retro U.S. market is, was a little foreign to them. And, uh, but I think they really came around and saw the, the, the benefit of, of going backwards on these guns. What are you guys calling it? You calling it the, uh, the P80? What you... Yeah, it's a P80. So, you know, the, we wanted to have something really unique with it. And, you know, our buddy Larry Vickers, when I was asking him about this originally several years ago, Say, man, Larry, what do you think about, you know, if we did a Gen 117, he said, man, that'd be really cool, you know, and, you know, he called me back one day later, he said, Jason, man, if you, if you get that done, I mean, that's a long shot, but if it happens, you ought to get him to mark him P80. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Larry, that's a great idea. I mean, because, you know, he goes, that would really tie in the original story of how it all came about. And so, and Glock was real receptive to that. And I think they liked the idea of kind of, you know, telling that original story of how all this came about as well. Yeah, you know, Larry Vickers runs a competing YouTube channel. We're going to have to play. No, Larry's, Larry's the man. We can edit that, that is, later. Now, I'm looking at this box mm -hmm. here. Um, this is how the gun's going to come, right? Yes. Yeah, it'll come in this over box. Um, we wanted something that kind of was cool and retro looking. Um, I think Glock knocked it out of the park. Uh, the graphics on there are cool. Um, it's got a little magnetic lid on the front. Mm -hmm. So when you pop it open, you know, it's... Basically tells the story of the what, what the P80 is. It's got the original graphics, and then this isn't the the correct box, <laughs> not at all. What? what yep. uh, I mean, I can't believe you did this. This is a stroke of genius. This you guys have the original yep. Tupperware the original box. Tupperware box. Yeah, that was one of the things. How'd you swing that? How did that happen? You know, when we were hatching out the details. Was this and Larry's idea too? <laughs> no, this one. This was well. He definitely would have thought of that. Yeah, you know? for but, sure. But we, you know, we were talking about the specs and the things that we could do, we couldn't do. And I, you know, I said, gosh, man, it'd really be cool if we could do the old box. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, originally at first they were like, well, you know, we don't, we hadn't made those. You know, it'd be kind of a thing. I said, well, y'all really think about it. I mean, again, there's the difference between doing a, a cool project and a great project. Oh yeah. And and the packaging sometimes gets overlooked. Sure. And um, I said, God, just figure it out. See if you can do it. And and they came back and said, hey, you know, we looked and I think we can recreate it. And so it was kind of a, it was cool for that fact, but also it worked out in our favor for this cool overbox because now you've got the locks and all the manuals and stuff. It wouldn't all fit in the original box like they did originally. So we had to do an overbox. So it was kind of, now you got to have a commemorative box to go with it. So it came out better than we even planned. Yeah, I, I like how we're doing this too. We, we started with the, uh, with the collector box here, yep. like the, the packaging we'll call it. 
Then we've got the, the Glock Tupperware. Now let's bring the skirt over the knees <laughs> right. and let's pop this thing open and see so, what we got. There it is. There it is right there. You know, it's the... The texture is the first thing that grabbed the, the, me. That's the, the, you know, that's the thing with the, with the Gen 1 guns is the, is the texture. You know, it was wrapped around. It was a smoother pebble grain uh, texture that they had. Um, you know, the, I really like it personally. It feels really good to me. The, um, you know, the lack of finger grooves now is in the Gen 5, but, you know, originally they didn't have finger grooves either, and that always fit my hand better mm -hmm. as well. Um, no yeah, finger grooves. No finger yeah, grooves. Yeah, the Gen 3, Gen 4, people just bitched and bitched and bitched. Yeah, it just, they? yeah. And so, I, you know, it's funny, with, with now in the Gen 5, they've gone back to some of the stuff that was on the original gun as well. Um, you know, we got them to actually do the P80 markings. They use the original font that they used back then. So and like, explain that for our viewers out there who don't understand. It's like, what, what is the P? Is that Polymer 80? Yeah, that's, no. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a no. This is not no. a Polymer 80, you know. <laughs> and uh, so the P80 all came about in, in 1980. The Austrian military decided that they wanted a new service pistol. They had been carrying, using the, the Walther P38s up until that time. You know, World War II era type stuff. And so they put a solicitation out. You know, the normal suspects were putting in, uh, you know, guns, and, and in 1981, Gaston Glock decided, you know what, I'm going to get into this, into this bidding process, and at that time, he had not made a gun. He was in the, you know, in the uh, industrial businesses. I think he was making mold-injected parts for vacuum cleaners and different stuff like that. Uh, he puts a team together in 81 to design a gun, and this is what they came up with. They submitted it. In 1982, he wins a contract. Um, pretty really amazing when you think about it and that's one of the reasons why we want to do this project is because that's a really cool story that a lot of even hardcore gun guys don't know mm -hmm. and um, so the Austrians adopted um, you know the, the first I think 4,000 guns that go off the off the line are, are marked P80 and go to the Austrian military um, shortly after that uh, Sweden and Norway both adopt that gun and then they're sold commercially in Europe as the Glock 17 mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't until 1986 that they actually came into the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, 86, they show up. 1988, the Gen 2 comes out. So they're really on the U.S. market for only two years, the original Gen 1. So they're really, a, you know, there's not a ton of them on there. And when you do see them, like on Gunbroker or whatever, they, they go for pretty big money. True to form, this is even though, and this is a sticking point that I have, even though... The U.S. guns and the Austrian guns are virtually identical, it, made on the same machinery, yep. made with the same tooling, even monitored by like the same engineers yep. in Austria. Uh, yours is made in Austria. It's an Austrian gun. Uh, and yes. I think that that's going to be for the collectors out there. I yes. think that is going to be uh, one of the times where I think it is important. I, uh, yeah, you know, I think you know, to do this right, that, I think they needed to be made in Austria. Yeah, sure. So walk us through all the features, if you would. Uh, tell us what's different about the P80 versus like maybe the present generation. Okay. The P80 that we have here really internally is a lot like the Gen 3, Gen 2, and Gen 1. The Gen 1 through 3s, a lot of the internals were the same. You know, mm -hmm. the recoil spring systems, triggers, all that kind of stuff. Pretty much, there wasn't a whole lot of changes in there. Um, you know, they did, when the 40 Smith & Wessons came out, they did go to the two pin right. yeah, uh, frames. Yeah. You know, the, the nine millimeters never needed the second pin. Right. Um, so we were able to get, use a one pin like the original on mm -hmm. that. So, um, you know, over the years on the extractor, they did uh, end up putting a little bump on there for a loaded mm -hmm. chamber indicator. We did get Glock to recreate the flat extractor. Oh, to very it, cool. To, to give it that same look as the original. Um, you know, obviously the frame textures and the rails and stuff like that were the, the main differences in the generations. When we got to the Gen 5, there were some more internal differences with, um, you know, um, the, the, the triggers and the, the recoil spring systems in the Gen 4 was a little different. Um, but this gun is basically the same as a Gen 1 through Gen 3 series of guns. Sure. And I, I see you've got, I mean, gosh, the magazine release, of mm -hmm. course, like anybody who's used a Gen 4 or Gen 5 yeah. is immediately going to be like, wow, that seems like a, a it's, dinky it's, magazine release. Yeah, it's pretty release. small, but that, but that, that was, was the standard was for the a long standard, time. Yeah, for a long time. Um, the, if I remember correctly, I think the serial number is in a different location on this version. Correct. Versus the so on the Probably original, for legal reasons. Well, in, in sure, Europe, the, the serialized part is the slide. Right. It's not the frame. So when the, they made P80s for the Austrian military, they didn't serialize the frames. There was right. no need to. I mean, right. There was that wasn't even a, a thought process. So all the P80 bar guns, really, as far as I know, there's none in the United States, at least none in civilian hands. Um, because the frames weren't marked, mm -hmm. they didn't have serial. So obviously we had to we had to do that. Um, that was something we had to get done. It was a little bit different. 
Um, you know, the, the Austrian military markings, uh, we couldn't get permission to put those on them like the original P-80s had. So we had to compromise on that one. Um, the original barrels on the first, I forget the amount of guns, but for the first production runs, they had actually what they referred to as a pencil barrel. Right. It's a 13 and a half millimeter diameter barrel. You know, Glock, we, we, we asked them about that feature. They kind of looked yeah. at it and then they came back and said, no. That would, I would think that would be an involved process. Yeah, it, it would have been. And right. it was one of those things where it's like, hey, you know, we actually got them to say yes to this. I'm not going to do anything that's going to make them say no <laughs> yeah, at this yeah. point. So we, so we compromised and went with sure. the 14 millimeter barrel. That's still current today. And, and a lot of P80 marked guns in future runs had that same barrel anyways. Sure. So it's not like all P80s. Right, exactly. So it's still relatively authentic Correct. in that respect. And I, I noticed that the barrels even mark P80 as yep. well. Talk to me about the uh, the slide and barrel finish. Is this, I mean, I know that that's something that Glock, I mean, this is something for years I've been trying to get a Glock engineer to sit down and say, hey, can we explain to everybody the differences between mm -hmm. the finishes from Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, so right. forth, uh, from the tenifer to the phosphating mm -hmm. to the NDLC coating? Can we describe that evolution? They're so protective about it yeah. that, I mean, I'm not even sure that, that there are many people out there in the civilian market who have any real grasp of the finish differences. Right. With that in mind, is there anything you can tell me about the finish differences in the slide in the barrel for the P80 versus the original? So or the originals in... would have been the Tenifer. You know, mm -hmm. and, and to this day, people still call the Glock finished tenifer. tenifer it hasn't yeah. been tenifer in a long time. A long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we ended up having to do is do the NLDC. Mm -hmm. uh, but I told them, I said, look, we really want to strive to have the color variation look a lot like the original. And I think it does. That that finish um, is, is pretty durable. We've had really good luck with it in the other guns that we've yeah. had. Uh, the tenifer stuff, I think there's part of the process on the materials. I think they, they outlawed in Europe. Yeah, so I, I think that's what it was. I don't it was think an they environmental can, concern. It's an environmental yeah, deal. Yeah. I don't think legally they could. They do could it do either. the tenifer if Correct. they if they wanted to. Correct. Yeah. So, it, but the NDLC coating, I mean, it does look good. Yes. And, and it's just so neat whenever you open one of these up because it almost is like when somebody says, "Hey, I've got a really cool Gen One. It's in the original Tupperware box." You open it up and it's like, "Oh my God, it's brand new!" Because yeah. if you've ever seen like a, even a Gen Two Glock Seventeen, mm -hmm. they're all beat to shit like right now. The, and a lot of more yeah. old top guns. Well, you know, nobody, you know, nobody back then thought that these guns would be collectible at any time. No, why would I you? Mean, not, yeah. Especially when the Gen Ones were out. I mean, at that time, Glocks were still not even really taken serious by the hardcore gun community. I mean, they were. It was a plastic gun. It was a nine millimeter. You know, it, it didn't have a thumb safety. Uh, you know, it was, you know, you could get it through an x-ray machine, all the, all the myths and misconceptions of the Glock at that time. So nobody was thinking back then, I better put this away and it's going right. to be a collector's item. So we're looking at just, uh, for people out there who might not know, we're talking about, this is a 9mm Glock 17 with yep. a 17 plus 1 capacity. It right. is just like the, this is as close as you're going to be able to get this day and age to the original Gen 1 Glock 17. Correct. Figured I'd throw that out there just in case there were people watching who had no idea. You know, it's like, what the hell are, are they it's, it's a good point, James, because a lot of times we, we forget. We're, we, we do this all day, every day. It's, we think about and you forget about the details that some people might remember that, that that was the original gun. Talk to me about the magazines. Are we going? Are these Gen 5 magazines? Did you get the non-drop free <laughs> magazines? Like, right. what did you guys do for the mags? So on the magazines, you know, the originals were non-drop free. They didn't have the steel line right. or they had the, the, the U-back shape mm -hmm. on them. That was one that was a no-go. Yeah, that's um, not going to happen. And, and you know, and, and and that's one where I did talk to Larry about. So Larry said, "How important is that?" He goes, "You know, Jason, there's tons of those magazines out there. You can there. still find them. You can get and them. They suck. They, they suck. Like I'll, I'll give them to you. I will, right. I will trade you. Nobody out. liked them. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so he said, "You know, if somebody wants one bad enough, they can get them. Yeah, you can just and get so, it. And so he made a good point. So it was another. That was one of those battles again that wasn't really worth fighting. To me, the box was way more important than oh, getting the magazine. Um, so it does come with just two standard, you know, Gen 3 style magazines. Who do you think is going to buy this? Is it going to be collectors? Is it going to be shooters? Who's buying this gun? I think a lot of collectors will be interested in it. Um, you know, it, it is it is unique. It's something different. I think, you know, I think there's just a lot of guys who are, who are Glock guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, you know, heck, I'm one of them. I've got several Glock 19s, several 17s, 20s. You got the whole, the whole spectrum of them. But I don't have one of those, mm -hmm. and so you know I, I'm that buyer. You know I'm the kind of guy who's like who would say, okay, I got to have one of those. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. The fact that it's a it's a P80 Mark gun to me ratchets up the cool factor. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's a Glock. You know, it, it shoots. I've shot that uh, not this one, but an, another sample, a pretty good bit. You know, it shoots like a Glock 17. Uh, you know, it, it's 
it's great. Some people don't like the, uh, the, the Gen 4 or Gen 5 texture. This gun is, uh, is pretty comfortable to shoot. And I think there's some people who, who are gonna like that texture, uh, who don't want finger grooves. Uh, there's still a lot of guys out there who they don't like their super aggressive texturing. I know we did the Vickers guns, they had the RTF2, and, and for some people it was too rough. So this may be a little bit of a, a forward question, but is this going to be priced at a number where it's like, if I just liked it, if I just, I didn't care about having a Picatinny rail or a, rather a Glock standard rail yep. uh, under my dust cover, finger grooves, all the modern amenities, this is actually really what I would want to mm -hmm. carry. If I'm that guy, am I gonna be able to afford this and, and beat this gun up or is this gonna be priced like a collector item? No, this is priced like a regular everyday Glock. So uh, I think MSRP is 669, which mm -hmm. is I think about 20 bucks more than a regular Glock. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a little more expense with, with some of the, the, the add-ons and everything. But basically this gun is going, if, you're, if you are a Glock, have a Glock budget, you'll, you're gonna be able to afford it. Jason, are you comfortable speculating as to what do you think street price is going to be? I think street prices will be under $600. Okay, and so if you wanna take it and you wanna beat the shit out of it, or you wanna buy two copies. Correct. You wanna keep one uh, to shoot and you wanna keep that, one to That'll collect. probably like me. You know, I'll probably have one to put back. You and, guys would love that. And say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I wanna have one that buy I gotta two. take out. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. How many of these are going to be made? So in order to get this done, you know, originally, again, the, the original molds were we're not there. So they had to remake these molds. So when they have to remake a mold, it's, it's a pretty big commitment. How faithful is it? I mean, how did they remake the mold? Did they find the old plans? Yeah, what? they have the old original plans. Okay, so yep. this is no different. I mean, truly is going it to is, be, other than being newer, no different correct. than the original they went Gen to, 1 frame. They went into really big detail to get uh -huh. that right. Uh -huh. And you know, and they said, look, you got one chance to do this right, guys. Yeah, you know, sure. And, they, and to their credit, they, they knocked out of the park. Yeah. Um, so it was a pretty big commitment. So initially, we'll, we're gonna have 10,000 of these. Uh -huh. Um, you know, and then, and then we can, you know, do more, uh, after that. I think we'll mm -hmm. need them. Here's where I give you the, the chance to pitch yourself, Jason. And that is, I keep saying you guys in the colloquial sense, you guys, you guys, you guys, I'm referring to Lipsy's. Lipsy's, you are a distributor. Correct. And for people out there who don't know, I actually used to work for a distributor. I used to buy from, when I was in FFL, yeah. I used to buy from Lipsy's. You guys were truly one of my favorite distributors because I was only like seven hours away in yeah. Tallahassee. So yeah. I could get something like Pronto from you guys. But you buy in massive quantities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw your warehouse. Like it is, guys, <laughs> this thing is like freaking huge. It was like, what it made me think of is kind of weird. Like uh, books a million, or like, yeah. like Home Depot, yeah. you know, like yeah. going in there. So you guys have this massive warehouse. They buy in quantity a, a ton of these guns. You guys have, I mean, enough money to buy 10,000 Glocks. Um, and then you sell one by one, you sell mm -hmm. these guns to your local gun store. That's Correct. how how that works. You guys are going to be the exclusive distributor Correct. for these guns. So if there's somebody out there who's watching who's an FFL, they want to get one, or if you guys uh, want to buy one, if you're a viewer, their dealer has to have an account, has to go through Lipsy's or Correct. purchase these from Lipsy's. Right, the best thing to do is to, is to go to our website, lipsy's.com, and we have a dealer finder there. Oh, yeah. Punch in your zip code, it'll pull up. Any, any dealer that pulls up on that zip code means that they're active with us, they can order that day. So you can get with them, they can get it on order for you. Um, you know, again, I think these will be pretty tough to get here at first just because it is a Glock. Uh, sure. And, and times are, are tight on blocks, but uh, you know, be patient, and we're, we're going to get them out. But you know, we we deal with uh, dealers across the whole country, so we're not just regional. Now, most important question: When are the first ten thousand going to be available? So these are shipping, starting to ship September 1st. So that would be today, right? Today. You guys are embargoing me until yeah. September 1st. Right. So you guys, nobody's gonna hear about this right. until this video runs at 8 a.m. Central Time on September 1st, but they will be available today. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, we've got, we'll have about half of them um, at first and then we're supposed to have the other half, uh, you know, in the next 30 to 60 days. Jason, thanks a ton for bringing us down here. I truly appreciate it. Uh, this is, of course, I'm so glad when you called me, I was like, oh my God, don't, don't be nervous. Don't be, <laughs> don't be I'm, I'm always excited to get my hands yeah. on a new Glock and to get an early sneak preview. We're gonna take all this footage, we're gonna go home, wrap it up, upload it to TFB TV, bring it to you guys. Thanks again, Lipsies, for having Thanks. us. Guys, take care, we'll be bringing you more soon.